today based on requests you've had in the past and so on we're going to try and share how you can do linear regressions with uh, in in google earth engine so i will start i will share my screen and get to the presentation right away and um, so uh, what i do want to start with is uh, a disclaimer that i'm not going to be uh getting into linear regression as a statistical concept but this session will focus more narrowly on linear regression uh, as a google earth engine skill how do you do uh, linear regression within google earth engine so all the care and learning that one will have to exercise to apply this uh, uh, this this method uh, carefully that i'm assuming all of you uh, have had the background to do and uh, will will ensure that you're deploying that carefully so uh, to uh, jump right in a simple linear regression helps fit a linear statistical relationship between a response variable also called a dependent variable and a single predictor variable which is also called the independent variable so the form in which this is written is in the form of a linear equation where the predictor variable x is related to the response variable y through uh, two parameters one of which is the intercept which um, essentially describes what the value of uh, of y would be when x is zero and the second is uh, a slope or a scale parameter which says how does that change as x starts to change so the kind of things that are uh, amenable to do within the framework of linear regression in a uh, in a platform like google earth engine are you may want to ask how does biomass as in the indexed by evi change with precipitation or for instance does biomass uh, is biomass affected in areas that are frequent fires plant biomass affected in areas with frequent fires so these are the kinds of uh, simple linear regression kind of uh, issues that you could tackle using google earth engine and the what i have talked about is the simple linear regression but this is also approach this approach is extensible when you have multiple predictors where you have x1 x2 and so on you can still have the uh, the concept work as it does with a simple version and that too is something that earth engine supports but that's not an example we're going to get into uh, in uh, get into today so there are two contexts in which i want to talk about linear regression in earth engine the first is a context where we are trying to ask and answer a question uh, that is looking at uh, relationships across space so for instance uh, yeah if in an image in a single image we have two bands let's say one were a band that tracked vegetation uh, let's say evi or ndvi and another band in the same image tracked human presence or human settlement let's say using night lights so as human presence increases as as the brightness of these increases what happens to uh, as human presence increases we could be asking what happens to vegetation or as fire frequency increases what happens to biomass so these are the kinds of question that we are trying to answer where the information we've got a lot of data that we have aggregated for perhaps composited over time and what we have been left with are are two uh, variables which is the independent and independent variable both as bands in a single image and when we run this the input is an image and the output that we get is a single dictionary where we get the intercept the slope and the residual of the running the regression so that is the first context the second context is where let's say you are trying to look at how something changes over time is there an increasing trend is there a decreasing trend so in such a situation you have multiple images in a collection that are organized in order of time 
where image one is perhaps the earliest and image 10 is the latest one here. And what you do, this is typically how time series data are arranged and structured within Earth Engine. So here, your input to the regression is an image collection. And what you get is essentially a regression running, believe it or not, in every single pixel of your image. And for every pixel in the image, you get regression outputs, such as the slope, the intercept, and the residuals. And this is a complex data type which is stored in each pixel. And that's what makes it what is called an array image. And that can be uh, flattened or, or uh, represented a slightly different way so that it can actually be seen where your output image finally shows you either the trend, if you like it, or the intercepts, or perhaps the reliability as indexed by your RMS error or something like that. So let's go and look at both these contexts. So what are the steps involved in undertaking a linear regression across space? So what you would have to do is prepare your um, image data. So there are three fairly simple steps. You prepare your input image data, which has both the independent and the dependent variables. You construct the in input image, which has to be done in a specific way. I'll, I'll show you in a minute how to do that. And then once you have the image in that particular, uh, where the bands are arranged in that particular way, you can apply the re linear regression, which like all other statistics in Earth Engine is uh, available through a reducer. And then you print the outputs. As a couple of, in the, in the code that I have shared below, it's, it's a complete example. I have a few additional things which try to do, uh, also show how you can chart something and see uh, what what your data are actually showing so that you don't just have to look at uh, consolidated metrics like uh, slope and uh, intercept, but you also can get to see the actual data. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is asking, how does vegetation vary with increasing human presence? And um, I just want to leave, for those of you for whom you, this might be, you may already be familiar with this, this kind of an idea is extensible. You can do the, much further with this. You can start predicting uh, uh, various things using multiple input bands in a more complex regression framework. And if you are interested in doing that, check regression trees. And that's something that might be a do-it-yourself project that you'd like to do. So now let's get to the steps a little more closely. So what I have done in my example is that I have got a collection of night lights from a certain period, an eight year period, chosen the correct band that I'm interested in, and I have uh, got a median composite from that. Similarly, I have taken the MODIS NDVI data, and then for the same period of time, I've selected the NDVI band, and this requires a little bit more of, uh, of processing because these are 16 day composites, so you get multiple composites within a year, and I wanted to uh, bring it all down into one image. And the way I have done that is that I have tried to find the annual maxima, which I'm interested in. And for each of the eight years, having got a manual maxima, I have obtained the median and then you know, uh, corrected to the scale factor that's inherent to this data and prepared the relevant image data. So then what I have done is to construct the image to be used in the linear regression. I have started by putting a constant image, which is needed because one of the parameters we are estimating is a constant, the intercept, to which I have also added the night lights, which in this case is our independent variable. These are, are two independent variables. We are trying to estimate a coefficient for this and a constant here. And this is the dependent variable. And this is the sequence in which they get added. And that is important here. And I have, to, since they come from different data sources and so on, I have done a reprojection to ensure that they are all at the same scale, so that you know when we are trying to do a, uh, a graph and so on, we end up with the same number of points, and you don't have uh, problems uh, on that count. So finally, applying the linear regression reducer is, is is quite simple. So you take the image that you have uh, produced, apply a reduce region, which by default works on the entire footprint of the image. You use the EE reducer linear regression, providing two parameters, one which describes how many independent variables you have, 
and the second one which describes how many dependent variables you have you could have a second dependent variable as well so you could have multiple uh, independent variables as i mentioned to you at the start and i was doing this over the region of kerala state at a certain pre chosen scale and that gave me the outputs which i was able to print like so there's a simpler version of what this gives uh, in another function called ee reducer linear fit which gives us the scale and the offset which is the slope and the intercept parameters which you can use straight away as well it's useful for you to know this and often we are trying to see and evaluate the strength of a relationship between two variables and that too can be estimated using the pearson correlation coefficient which is available under the pearson correlation reducer which can also be applied and the script has all of these um so this is a quick run through of the script we will go to the code editor and take a look at that as well but from here we go to the second context context where we are trying to uh uh do this uh, do a linear reg regression sorry let me go back okay here um we are trying to do a linear regression over time so here again i will quickly run you through another example what i have taken here is an assessment of the nature and extent of changes in urban footprint in india you all are aware of this very famous data set of the night lights and what it allows us to do is look at a 20 year period between the early 90s to the uh, the early 2010s of how the areas that were under stable light uh, changed over that 20 year period and that was a very good way of trying to get a sense of where have the extent of lights been so this is this is an intensification of human activity settlement and and so on so were there places where it increased how fast did it increase were there places where it decreased where were they this is the kind of a, a question you are trying to ask uh, when you are doing an analysis like this so what we have is a 20 year data set and i am trying to find out what are the places where the urban footprint expanded and increased what are the places where the urban footprint may possibly have not changed and what places the urban footprint may have even decle declined so again as, uh, an aside for people who might be a little ahead of the pack right now is when you are trying to do uh, linear regression in context like this with time series data there are more uh, it's it's a very important starting point for time series analysis so i the example i have chosen doesn't have is is rather simple but you could be looking at for instance how vegetation changes over time where there is a seasonal component as well as a interannual component and here you could look there's an there's an interesting uh, example available where you can look at how linear regression is used to remove trend from a uh, time series and then start looking at the harmonic or the cyclical components of um, of the time series that you have but coming back so like i said here what we're going to do is look at a 20 year time frame at years of where the night light values are available and see how they expand as or or contract as time passes on so here is what i have done again got the night uh, lights data set of stable lights and this is the 22 year period that i have from 1992 to 2013 and for each year i have uh, mapped the function where the uh, so there are uh, under for some years there are multiple data sets that are there so i have uh, ended up trying to get a mean of that for for each year and since the time stamps are important this is a time series data set i've also made sure i've copied the uh the uh system time start property into the new image that we've got and then uh this is a place where we've done something slightly different so as you understand in earth engine you have images which have multiple bands and you have image collections which have multiple images so here what we are doing is to this image collection 
we are mapping a custom function that adds a time band. We take the timestamp and add it as a separate band to each image. We also add a constant band because these are our two independent variables, and we need to create bands which have these values within them in each image. And each image in the collection represents a different point in time. And then we select the bands in the same sequence of independent variables first and then the dependent variable. So that's what we have done here. And the third step is we apply the linear regression reducer, which, as I showed you earlier, is actually very simple. Here you take the entire uh, time series data set and you reduce it using the linear regression reducer, where you have two independent variables and one dependent variable. And um, what you get is an image that is an array. So each pixel of the image that you get contains the uh, parameter estimates for the two coefficient, the, the intercept and the slope, as well as uh, details of the residual. And these are things that are not straight away visualizable like uh, float or integral data in the held in pixels. So this is actually an array that is held in a pixel. So one needs to flatten this array. And there are two kinds of um, uh, uh, components within the array image, one of which is the coefficients. And if you're interested in the residuals, you can get that too. But I was interested in the coefficients. So I've got that, the slope and the intercept. And I have flattened this using an array flatten because it's a, a, a complex structure that is not uh, visualizable as it is. But once it is flattened, it can be visualized. And I've clipped it to the boundaries of uh, India to see where urban footprint has changed within India's boundaries. So these are some visualization parameters. What I get are uh, how night lights have changed over time. So this is the slope parameter. This is the intercept. So I have just put them in the red, green, and blue uh, bands, and visualizing, and I'm visualizing them with these parameters on a map, which we will see in a moment. So that is basically, uh, besides this, in my code, which is available here, you also have, uh, you can look at a graph. I have taken two areas which have very different kind of patterns with the change in urban footprint. So with this, let's, head straight to the code. So uh, first off, we have, uh, I have already introduced you to the code, so I'm not going to uh, dwell too much on this. This is the place where we are putting the two data sets together. Uh, of, this is the first one of uh, linear regression across space where we looked at an eight-year data set of night lights and NDVI. And in the area of uh, Kerala, where we were limiting our analysis to, what we saw is that in uh, pixels within one region, uh, as the va value of night lights and the night light intensity increases, you have NDVI decreasing. It's not such an earth shaking or uh, counterintuitive or surprising result. It is, I hope you will have more, uh, will have better examples in which to employ. I just wanted a simple example where there's a very obvious trend that one can see. And what I wanted you to see here is are these results, which is the, uh, when you, where you can run the Pearson correlation coefficient, where you can get a 0.71, a minus 0.71, because this is a declining relationship and a P value, which you can get. And with the linear regression, what you get are these two coefficients, which are the intercept and the slope. And um, you get, with the linear fit, you get exactly the same thing. So this, the offset basically tells you what the value of, uh, of NDVI is at zero nightlight intensity. And from there, how it decreases, this is a minus here, as with, an, with increasing night light intensity. You get the same parameters in both the linear fit reducer and the linear regression reducer. But in the linear regression, you get something called a residual, which is the root mean square error. 
And this tells you how good the fit is. Unlike an R square, this is an absolute measure. You can relativize it by dividing by the mean or something like that. But this is a very good measure of getting a sense of how good the fit is of your model with the data. So this is a relationship where as night light intensity uh, increases, you have uh, NDVI, vegetation cover, decreasing. So that's example one of linear regression across space. The second example of linear regression over time is where we have, uh, what we have tried to do is bring together, I have chosen two locations which I looked at earlier, one for suburban Bangalore, where there's an expanding footprint and there's a place in Northeastern India where you actually get a, a completely different footprint. So what you see here in this, so for a moment, let's look at the visualization. I have talked about the analysis itself. What the visualization is showing you is that the areas that are in red are areas where the urban footprint has been expanding. In other words, year on year, if you look at the, um, the slope, you are getting an increasing slope like in Bangalore. So these are the measures you can see here. This is the graph that's available. So if you have a point over suburban Bangalore here, this is what happens. It starts with a value of 11 or 12 and is in the 60s by the time you get 20 years down. And there are areas of, of uh, Northeastern India like in Assam where there uh, are uh, gas fields and these are not places that are permanent. One has to keep moving. So uh, things that used to be much, much brighter than Bangalore uh, at that point of time have slowly over time where I think with the de declining yields and so on, they may have shut down those gas fields and so on. So there are places here. There's also data of Bombay High, which you can't visualize in this particular thing where you see similar decline in uh, night lights over the 20 year period. So what I also want to quickly point out to is uh, uh, the what you get when you uh, print the regression estimates for, um, so for the two of the features that we picked of urban Bangalore and uh, of, of uh, areas of upper Assam, uh, for each of these two features you get, so like I said, there is a regression in every pixel and there are parameters in every pixel. So I have put a point and we are looking at the pixel, the regression results underneath that point in a pixel. And what you get are for suburban Bangalore, you have, I mean, this is not something I'm very comfortable with. You have an intercept that's minus 50. I'm not quite sure what minus 50 means, maybe at a, so this is at, uh, at time zero, this I, I'm, I'm not quite sure because I think it's produced. It's starting in a way that it's produced back further. It ends up with a negative intercept. Ideally, this shouldn't be happening in your regression. You should have thought this through a little more carefully than I evidently have. But that is something that's uh, all right, I think, for this example. And you see that this is a, uh, a positive slope with an expanding, which indicates there is an ex expanding. So you could, in addition, also plot this plot residuals on a map and see which are the places where you have the most reliable estimates of change. And you could incorporate that into your visualization or your data subsetting as well. So similarly here, if you look at these uh, areas of upper Assam, you see that they start out, the intercept starts out being very high. Uh, so the, this, is, this is the data itself. This is not the fit. So, but if you look at the fit, it starts out at being somewhere around 61 and starts to decline over time. And there's a negative uh, slope here. And these are again, estimates you can get for each of these because there is what this is showing you, this fancy image is showing you is where there have been urban expansions, where have there been night lights which have been stable and where have there been declines over this 20 year period. And this is done by having a full regression with 22 points for each pixel and a fit for each pixel whose slope and intercept are used in visualizing this right now. So this is the uh, example of a time series regression uh, over time. I'm going to uh, now stop.
and wrap up. I think I have taken my share of time and uh, I'd be happy to take any questions after this. Thank you. Great, excellent. Thanks a lot, Madhu. That was uh, really nice. I